Okay, good morning everybody. Oh wait a minute, I'm gonna wait for the card reporter to get situated. I'm sorry. Okay. Good morning everybody. Welcome on behalf of the Governor's Office, Administration and Finance, Health and Human Services, and their disability agencies, the Bureau of the State House, Waverly Place, and other nonprofit organizations. I want to welcome you to the first and hopefully annual Disability Mentoring and Employment Day. As many of you are aware, this October is Disability Employment Month, and Jennifer Hines approached me from Waverly Place, approached me several months ago and asked me if I would be willing to have this day house be a home for this day, and I said absolutely yes. About 16 years ago, I lost my job at a um, local television station. I was their marketing person, and I lost my job and I didn't know what to do. And I was getting a lot of interviews based on my resume because I had bought in millions of dollars for the television station. And so my resume was solid, but whenever I got the interview and went in, people and employers would see a man walk in with two hearing aids and a guide dog and automatically make assumptions on whether or not I could work for them. At one interview, I was even asked, how am I gonna get to work every day? I didn't know what to do. It had gone on over a year that I was unemployed. So there was an email circulating thing, networking for people with disabilities. So I took that class, and Jennifer Hine was the teacher of that class. And she's here today representing Waverly Place. And the reason why I'm standing before you today, she's the one that decided to put on this event. Employers are often afraid to hire people with disabilities because they're afraid of the cost of accommodation. Well, according to the Job Accommodation Network, accommodations are less than $500 per person. And I will tell you as one who has accommodated several employees in this building, it's less than $100 for me. They're afraid of over-supervision or lack of um, over supervision or the work of being under qualified. That's not the case. Studies have shown that workers are more productive, they show up on time, they never call out, and they're better problem solvers because of the fact that they have a disability. And often employers are also afraid of being stuck because they're afraid they're going to be a charity case. And that's not the case. If the person's not qualified, you don't have to hire the person or keep the person. From the disability perspective. I was unemployed for more than two years. And I want to speak to those who are in the room who may have a disability, who may be looking for work. I know it's hard to get out there. And I know it's hard to stick yourself out there and, and maybe be subjected to rejection time after time after time. The running joke was I was always the bridesmaid and never the bride when it came to looking for work. And I know how hard it is. And I even felt into a funk while I was looking and stopped looking for work for a few months. And my wife finally came home one day and said, Carl, I didn't mail you so you could sit home and do nothing. I don't care if you get out and volunteer every day. But you've got to do something. And with the support of my wife, I eventually landed this job. And now I'm, I, I, I am happy to get up and work every day and be productive and hopefully also make a difference in the life with people with disabilities. So this event is hugely important to me. So please take, to the employers, thank you for coming. To the people with disabilities, please take advantage of this opportunity to meet with employers in Gray Hall behind me and a nurse's hall in front of me. We will also have a benefit specialist so that those who may wonder how this may impact their benefit, um, if they get employment, they can talk to them. And we also have a person to look at resumes and help you um, improve your resume or critique it if it needs to be so. So please take advantage of everything here today. And, and, and hopefully we, we will make this a bigger and better event every year to come. 
I want to introduce, I, I promised I would stick under five minutes, and for everybody that knows me, that's hard to do because I'm a talker. <laughs> uh, I want to introduce next the, the House Chair of the Family, Children, Families, and Persons with Disability Committee, Chair Kay Khan. <laughs> she has been a tremendous resource to the disability community, and I have enjoyed working with her in her office. And on the Senate side, we also have Senator Sonia Chang Diaz, who is the chair of the Senate, uh, on the Senate side of Children, Families, and Persons with Disability. She's going to come up and say a, a few re remarks and, and welcome everybody to the building. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And I just really want to take a moment to thank Carl Richardson for uh, what he has done over the years here at the Massachusetts State House. Uh, he's truly an inspiration, and we are so fortunate to have him. And it's been a great experience to be able to work with Carl. Um, probably almost every day, we have a little something uh, going on to make sure that people with disabilities are really taken care of properly and uh, we enjoy having them in our office. We ha have had several uh, people with disabilities working in my office, uh, the Committee on Children and Families and Persons with Disabilities and it's been incredibly rewarding. So I just want to give a hand again to uh, Carl for all, the, for all of his work. And, uh, and, and it's been an honor. And it's a, it's a really, uh, so I'm Representative Kay Khan, and I just want to say that it's a great honor to be here this morning for Disability Mentoring Day. And as the House Chair of the committee, uh, it's just been a great opportunity to get more involved with the disability community and to work with the agencies, uh, all of the agencies, um, under Health and Human Services and beyond, uh, because uh, it's, this is just so important. Uh, and I would just like to um, say that it's really the duty of the committee to consider all matters concerning children, youth, adults with physical, de developmental, or intellectual disabilities, child welfare, juvenile justice, and public welfare. The committee oversees a lot of things. We oversee the departments of developmental services, the Department of Children and Families, uh, transitional assist, the Department of Transitional Assistance, the Department of Youth Services, as well as the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind, the Deaf, and the Hard of Hearing, and the Mass Rehabilitation Commission. So my committee, uh, as a committee, we analyze, review, and hold public hearings on all related bills uh, on the agencies that we oversee, and we get about 150 bills at coming to our committee, so we do hold many public hearings and really value uh, the input of folks who come and testify on legislation. And it's really, it's heartening to hear the testimony. And I want to thank you, Carl, for sharing your story this morning. I think that's so important. So as House Chair, I also file bills um, on committee-related topics, such as House 141, an act relative to individuals with intellectual and de developmental disabilities. And this bill proposes to replace the words mental retardation with intellectual or developmental disabilities, which would allow existing Department of Developmentally, uh, Developmental Services regulations to be adopted as uh, statute consistent with the federal definitions of disabilities. Moreover, I'm excited to mention the work of one of my committee's subcommittees organized by House Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chair of the Committee, Representative Josh Cutler, and I just thought you might like to stand up and so people can see who you are. Um, <laughs> And when the session began and, and Josh was my vice chair, he came forward and said that he would like to create something called a workability committee. And he's been focusing on workforce development for persons with disabilities, assessing disability employment in the Commonwealth and making recommendations that promote opportunities for persons with disabilities to participate and succeed in our workforce. Uh, this subcommittee will be holding a hearing on Tuesday, October 22nd, that's a week from today, 
or yesterday, I guess, um, at 11 a.m. in B1 here at the State House, and I'm hoping that many of you can attend. I think it'll be a very uh, rewarding uh, day, and I think that um, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing it, the, um, uh, being at the public hearing and listening as well. So I just want to commend House Chair, House Vice Chair Josh Cutler for all his hard work, and believe me, he's really been working very hard. And I look forward to seeing his final report uh, with recommendations of what we as a Commonwealth can do uh, and would be, could be doing better. So I invite all of you uh, to, uh, for, the partic for your participation in the legislative process. It's complicated, but we really work hard up here. And many of our colleagues, many of my colleagues also have been very, very instrumental in uh, supporting and promoting pieces of legislation. So I want to give many of the um, other legislators uh, credit uh, because it is an important issue for all of them. And uh, certainly uh, we invite all of you to come and provide oral testimony at hearings and attending hearings like the one next week. Uh, so contact your own legislators and let them know what is important to you and why. And unite with your fellow community members, neighbors, families, and other organizations to advocate uh, for your concerns. And that's so important because what we do up here is really very much related to what your issues are, what your concerns are, what you would like to see happen um, uh, you know, just across the Commonwealth. Uh, so your, your voices are extraordinarily important. So again, I invite you to uh, come to our public hearings, call your legislators, let them know bills that you are particularly interested in, get them involved. And as legislators, we're pretty busy, so we really generally only like to, uh, we only have the time to respond to our own constituents. So I really recommend that you uh, take this time to find out who represents you and get in touch with them. Let them know who you are, what is of interest to you, and you can really help them uh, push for pieces of legislation that is important to all of you. So please um, get involved. If you're involved already, stay involved. And, um, and get to know your legislators. And today is just a great day. I think there's so many activities that are planned uh, for the day and opportunities to, uh, as you said, uh, fix your resumes and uh, really understand uh, a little bit more about the process of what needs to get done uh, to help you uh, become employed. And uh, so we look forward to that. And I just, again, want to thank Carl Richardson uh, for putting this all together. And thank you for inviting me to say a few words. Next, um, we had invited Commissioner David D'Arcangelo to come and speak, and at the last minute he couldn't be here in person. So we're going to play a video with some of his comments. I apologize in advance that the video is not captioned, but we will have Cart all over on the green to my right if you need to uh, follow what is being said. Uh, so here's Commissioner D'Arcangelo. Good afternoon, it's great to be with you. David D'Arcangelo here, Commissioner of Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. And I wish I could be with you in person. I'm actually right now at the National Industries for the Blind Conference and trying to discover opportunities for our consumers and people with disabilities back in Massachusetts. Various industries are here and really trying to discover employment opportunities for them. So otherwise I wouldn't have missed Mentoring Day. Such a great day. Mentoring ships are really the first part of the employment process to me. Uh, uh, first you mentor, then you can go into an internship, and then you're getting job interviews, and then hopefully getting hired and, and promoted. So to me, I view employment as a process, and really mentoring is, is the first step in that process. And there's so many great organizations around the state here, so many thanks to you and your organizations for taking part and partnering today and making it a priority to employ people with disabilities. And, and get on that path with quality mentoring opportunities. So a special shout out to my great friend Carl Richardson for hosting today up at the State House and uh, Tammy Krause and all of your Bureau of State Office building people for making this a priority. Thank you for your leadership and Jen Hind and, and partners uh, for their great leadership as well. And, and it takes so many people to put an event together. So uh, I don't want to miss anybody, but thank you all who really worked to put this together and 
uh, create opportunities for people with disabilities in the workplace and mentoring opportunities is very important. I remember myself how many mentoring opportunities I had and that really helped guide me and uh, give me an understanding of fields that maybe I was more interested in and, and some that I was not as interested in and it really helps you uh, narrow your focus in terms of employment opportunities because in the Commonwealth we're blessed to have so many different industries here and so many opportunities uh, for people of all abilities. So uh, the quicker you can start to narrow and focus in on what you'd like to do and what your uh, talents line up with, I think the better off it is going to be for the candidates and employees and for the businesses as well. So uh, I salute you all for the work you're doing and thank you so much. So anything we can do here at Massachusetts Commission for the Blind to expand opportunities for people in terms of employment, we want to know about, we want to partner and collaborate with you. So please get in contact with me or uh, one of your counselors here at MCB. And again, we want to explore opportunities because it really does take a village here for these efforts. And uh, I think you've all heard me many times talk about employment opportunities for people with disabilities. And over the years, it's been very challenging. And unfortunately, the data indicates that. But I think we're at a place in time right now and, and with good efforts of all working together, such as you in the audience here, we're changing that. And we're going to be changing that even more. So it starts humbly with things like mentoring. And uh, so please, the work you do is important. I value it and thank you again. So it's great to be with you. Sorry I couldn't be there. Look forward to being with you sometime soon. Have a great day. All right, well, thank you, Commissioner D'Arcangelo. And next, I would like to um, have Greg Ain from the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission come up. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Appreciate everybody being here. Um, I'm Greg Ames from the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, and I'm an employee uh, job placement specialist at our agency in the Somerville area office. And I'm here today to introduce Secretary S uh, Mary Lou Sutters. Uh, Mary Lou Sutters is Secretary of uh, Massachusetts Executive Office of Health and Human Services, the largest executive agency in state government. Secretary Sutters provides executive leadership of nearly $24 billion budget, the Mass Health. Medicaid insurance program that provides health coverage insurance, including the Department of Children and Families and Public Health. She leads the Commonwealth efforts to address the opioid epidemic, chairs the state's health care marketplace, and the Autism Commission, and co-chairs the Governor's Interagency Council on Housing and Homelessness and the Governor's Council to addressing aging in Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Sutters. I thought he was going to do that long introduction where it sort of looks like I can't hold on to a job. <laughs> um, so, Carl. Where's Carl? How did I lose Carl? So first to Carl. The first, the first event is the hardest event to put together, but it creates that foundation for the first to not be the last. So I really do want to give a shout out to Carl for really organizing all of us today. And I also want to thank Greg, not for the introduction, but for, but for what he does each and every day to open up doors of opportunities for individuals who want to work, and particularly for individuals who have different abilities, and that is how I think about disability. I don't think about it as a disability. I think about it as people who, as all of us are unique, individuals who come to the Mass Rehab Commission, who come to the Mass Commission for the Blind, who come to the Mass Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, are individuals who have unique challenges. And it's our opportunity, our privilege, to then find the connections that work for people. So please know that. Um, and also to um, the extraordinary Kay Khan. Uh, she and I have walked a journey, me and the executive branch, uh, Kay, Representative Khan, Chair Khan in the legislative branch, many years together on a variety of issues. Um, there is no one I can think of, but as chair of the Committee on Children, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities, to really carry your messages, your challenges, and your opportunities to heart and then into action and with Representative Cutler. So I really just want for just the years of grace and understanding and tenacity 
Um, and it does take tenacity on occasion um, to get things done, both in the legislative and in the executive branch. So really, I just want to thank you for that. I also want to, um, I know I'm doing a lot of thank yous here, but that's okay, because that's part of what we do when we think about networking and mentoring, is to open opportunities and to thank people for stepping up, for stepping forward. I also, um, I was a little worried that Commissioner D'Arcangelo was going to be in a little bit of a continuous loop, um, but I knew, he, I know he would be here if he could have been, I, you can tell him I said that. Um, but I also want to acknowledge two other extraordinary um, public servants, um, and that is Commissioner Florio from the Commission of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, who is the newest member of my enterprise, which is 54% of state government, um, and Commissioner Tony Wolf, um, the Commissioner of the Mass Rehab Commission, because these are individuals who I count on to tell me the truth of what they experience as agency heads and for me to try to channel that into opening up more doors of opportunity. So I really just want to thank them for what they do each and every day for individuals with abilities in the Commonwealth. So thank you for that. And then finally, because she hasn't gotten much notice today, I would like to officially congratulate in front of all these individuals, Mary Mahan McCauley, who is the new director of the Office of Disability. And she can tell you that what it was like for two girls to get together for a networking conversation. And she told me she was up for her next challenge. And when an opportunity became available, look what happened. She's the new director of the Mass Office of Disability. So congratulations, Mary. So folks, that is the power of networking. Um, and so one of the messages I just want to convey to all of you is um, when people take interest in you, reach out to them. Take that opportunity because it means that someone really has taken interest in you, your interests, your hopes, your dreams. And it's a sign of strength to accept that. It is not a sign of weakness. I am actually the beneficiary of lots of mentorships and internships along the way. Um, this may sound odd to you, but I have actually never applied for a job. I have never applied for a job cold. And it's not because I'm that special, but because I had the extraordinary opportunity to be mentored very early in my career. So doors of opportunity were opened for me now I had to like run through those doors before they closed and I knew that at times it was my own inhibitions, my fears that I thought that I might fail um, that sort of held me back. And so one of the things early on when some uh, women social workers reached out to sort of help me figure out my career, I like took them up on it. And to this day, so I'm pretty old now, I've got my Medicare card. Um, you can figure out the math. These are still people who are important in my life. They are my foundation of support. When the governor texted me, the governor-elect texted me the morning after the election, which I thought was to come on to his transition team, and then when I looked at it a little, close, a little more closely, I realized it was like a, perhaps a paid opportunity. Those were the women who I reached back out to as to whether this was really something I could do to actually be a secretary of half a state government. And trust me, I had my own worries, and I'm sure some of you have your doubts about that. Um, but those were the people that I rely on. I rely on them to this day for career advice, to help me get over my own fears, which yes, even as secretary I have on, on those days, and who bolster me when things aren't going well. That is the power of mentorships. So that is the message I really want to convey to you. All of us have benefited from mentorships, networks, opportunities. So please take advantage of today. Um, if anyone ever wants to send me your uh, resume, I am brutal at editing to help people really hone their messages. But take it up on us because Massachusetts is a great place to work. We have lots of jobs out there, and what our opportunity is to really make those connections happen so everyone can be successful. 
So thank you for having me. Please know I stand with you each and every day. Um, I have extraordinary public servants who I am privileged to work with and great colleagues. So thank you for all of that. Thank you. Have a great day. And please take advantage of all of it. Thank you, Secretary Summers. So that's the end of our presentation. We have our job fair happening in the Great Hall. We have all the other resources that were happening in the Nurses Hall. Enjoy the day, everybody. Thank you.